My name is Gloria Verdu, representing the Socialist Unity Party Prison Solidarity Committee and the Coalition to Free Political Prisoner Mumia Abu Jamal. First, let me thank all the organizers of this symposium against imperialist aggression and for inviting me to speak. We want justice. We are sending a recorded solidarity message from the US and hope that we can listen in on as much of the three-day conference as possible. I am also looking forward to listening to the group Iran concert on April 5th. Bring all political prisoners, prisoners of conscience, and prisoners of war is on the top of the list in the struggle for social justice because the state continues to use the criminal justice system to lock up those who sacrifice their livelihood for freedom and justice for the masses. We join the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression, the campaign to release aging people in prison, mobilization for Mumia, international concerned family and friends of Mumia Abu-Jamal, and many others calling for the US government to take immediate steps to depopulate jails, prisons, immigration detention centers, and juvenile facilities that are genocidal hotbeds for COVID-19 infection and death camps for millions. It is an honor to speak to you so close to the 67th birthday of Mumia Abu-Jamal, April 24, 2021. Internationally known U.S. political prisoner Abu Jamal is an award-winning journalist and author of 10 books, over 2,500 written essays and audio recorded commentators from prison. His writings are uncompromising, factual, and searing indictments of racism and political bias in the U.S. judicial system. His call for justice and defiance has not dimmed despite decades of being shackled and chained. He is one of our most courageous revolutionary intellectuals who says what is on his mind without fear of consequence. His book, Live from Death Row, has been translated into more than seven languages. It is clear to the movement that he remains in prison for telling the truth about capitalism, imperialism, the prison industrial complex, and the entire U.S. criminal justice system. Mumia Abu-Jamal was on Pennsylvania's death row for 30 years. His death warrant was signed twice by the state. He came dangerously close to execution on August 17, 1995 and December 2, 1999. It was the mobilization of a mass international movement that saved his life. In 2011, his sentence was commuted to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. After Abu Jamal was taken off death row, prison officials tried to kill him through medical neglect by denying him treatment for hepatitis C. Eventually, he received treatment because of a lawsuit but since treatment was delayed, he developed cirrhosis of the liver. The US government claims there are no political prisoners in the United States, which in fact, political prisoners make up the majority of the over 2.3 million people locked up in prisons, jails, and ICE detention centers throughout the United States. Abu Jamal is over 50 years old, has recently tested positive for COVID-19 has congestive heart failure and other pre-existing medical conditions that places him at a high risk of dying from this deadly disease. Over 20% of US prison inmates are over 50 years old and a large percentage of these, those have pre-existing medical conditions. It was reported December 2020 that one in five prisoners in the US has had COVID-19 and 1,700 have died. This is a vast undercount because there are many prisons where when people get sick, they do not get tested or receive the medical care, so they get much sicker than they need be. Today, there is no sign that the spread of the virus is slowing. This is a crisis for all prisoners, but especially for those elders who are behind bars because of their involvement in political activity. 
they are not going to be considered for prison releases recommended by public health experts to scale back prison populations. Prisoners such as 67-year-old Mumia Abu-Jamal, 84-year-old Sandiata Akola, 50 years incarcerated and has tested positive for COVID-19. 82-year-old Rochelle McGee, 57 years incarcerated. 82-year-old Native American Leonard Peltier, 43 years incarcerated. 77-year-old Russell Maroon Schultz, 48 years incarcerated, has been tested positive for COVID-19 and has pre-existing medical conditions. 77-year-old Ed Poindexter, 48 years incarcerated. 77-year-old Jamil Abdullah, 19 years incarcerated. 71-year-old Matua Shakur, 33 years incarcerated. These are just a few. There are hundreds more. The collective call is to release all prisoners, especially those over 50 years old who has tested positive for COVID-19, has been exposed to COVID-19, and has pre-existing medical conditions that places them at a high risk of dying if infected. The only freedom, the only treatment is freedom. This message was echoed by Abu Jamal's medical consultant, Dr. Ricardo Alvarez. Before preparing this talk, I read about the mother of Harleen Bullock, who stood by her daughter, held her up, supported her in her fight for justice and freedom. Harleen Bullock and three others sacrificed their lives in the worldwide struggle for justice demanding a, free, a fair trial to be judged justly and to stop the state terror against the musical band Group Iran. Bullock was on a hunger strike for 288 days under the care of her mother and supporters who loved her, nurtured her, and provided her the strength to sustain. She was kidnapped by the state and forced to, in, in a, into a stressful situation where she did not have the care and nurturing that she needed. It does not surprise any of us that our struggles are connected. We are fighting the same enemy. Group Yurum was targeted because they played revolutionary uplifting music, provided free music lessons, free concerts, and were embraced by the community. The Black Panther Party was targeted because they were revolutionary, provided free breakfast programs for children, free medical clinics, free schooling, and many programs that the community embraced. The families and friends of incarcerated freedom fighters do not want any of them to die locked down in prisons, jails, and detention centers. They want them to be home where they can be properly taken care of, loved, touched, and nurtured with human kindness. We want them to be energized and ready to continue the song, the dance, the struggle, the fight for freedom and justice. We want them out here fighting with us. This is why the only treatment is freedom. So please, anyone who hears these words, do something, but quickly. Release all prisoners now, because it is the right thing to do. In closing, we must acknowledge that prisons are concentration camps for the poor. The only way we're going to end mass incarceration and abolish the prison industrial complex is through revolution, a worldwide socialist revolution in solidarity. Thank you for listening.